hi and welcome back to the Lime Bay Press video channel. Um, today we're looking at um, embossing plates. We've recently started making these pretty much full on here at Lime Bay and I wanted to show you and introduce you to them if you're not already familiar. How to set them up on a press, um, what they look like, tell you how to order your artwork and also show you what you can actually achieve with them. These are examples of embossing finishes that we've used on a couple of, well, one invitation. And this is the embossed finish that we'll be creating today. So basically, before we start, the difference between an emboss and a deboss, if you didn't already know. A lot of our printing letterpress nowadays um, is done under, with a deep impression. So that's the deboss, where the design, the plate, the type, whatever, is pushed into the board to give you that relief. Um, using a pair of embossing plates, we can create the emboss where the design is actually raised from the card. And this is done literally by having two plates and the, your design that you're printing is sandwiched between these two plates and it will create the raised impression on your paper. So basically, let me show you the plates. An embossing pair is made up of a male plate and a female plate. If you're interested and you really want to have a go at embossing and you want to send me your artwork, just send it as you normally would. And I will do what we have to do to make sure that we can get the female from the male to create you an embossing pair. I'll need to know some small things, the thickness of the board that you're looking to emboss being one of them. And that's it. So let's get them set up. I'm going to show you how to set these up on a smaller press, on a Dana 8x5. You don't need a big press to emboss, but if you want to do, or if you want to emboss a large area, like this, which is on a 600 gram cotton, you will need a bigger press with the force, the strength, the pressure to be able to push, especially a thick board like this, into the two plates. But let's start. So I have my Adana 8x5 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my female plate onto our chase base. So I'll remove, I'm going to make it easy without dropping the plate. I'm going to remove my chase. I'm going to mount my female. Make sure she's well and truly stuck. Right, when she's mounted, let's take our chase. I'm doing this sideways, which doesn't help. And pop our chase base, our form, back in the press. Now you can probably see on here, I've got a simple single sheet of tympan or laser copy of paper so that when I mount my mail it'll stick to this which will also allow me which on a small press a tabletop press like this or even a treadle it'd be the same when you don't have as much control over the impression without starting to play with the the bolts on the back of the the casting it allows us to add packing should we need to go for a deeper impression or a deeper emboss. But be careful because if you're adding extra pieces of paper behind here, it's going to very slightly change the position. And once your mail is actually stuck down onto that paper, the chances are if you try to take it off, you're gonna rip the paper and you're gonna lose your sticky. So it may be worth having some spare sticky just in case. Right, we have our mail plate with the backing removed. Now, I've taken the rollers off this Adana 8x5 just to make it easy for me to get my hands in. Um, you can get away with removing the rollers for embossing because the plate won't actually damage the rollers. So if you're running something like 
our large Chandler and Price. You don't want to keep the taking the rollers on and off. The same with um, a Heidelberg, for example. You can just um, leave them on, but it can restrict the room when it comes to doing this bit. So I have my male, and now I'm going to get that into position onto the female, trying to touch or be in contact with as small amount of space as possible, but knowing that that isn't going to move because it's in the right position. I'm going to apply a small amount of masking tape just on the corners, just to hold it in place very carefully, move my hands out of the way. And then I'm going to close the press and the male should come away. There we go. And before they get stuck, remove one, the two pieces of masking tape. Now, this is the same process that I use on this press, the Chandler and Price, or even on our Heidelbergs, and it works. So, we have our two plates in position. Now, I'm going to be showing you how this works um, on a variety of cards, um, and even an envelope. And you've got to be careful with the amount of pressure that you have there. You want to be able to see that raised design when you print, but you don't want to crack the paper. You don't want to crease the paper. And the amount of impression that you're going to get really does. It's like I said, with this embossed invitation here, this was done on the Chandler and Price um, because it has a lot more strength to create this raised area over from large plates. On a small press like an Adana, you, if you completely covered your base with two plates to emboss that size, you're gonna have problems creating a decent level of emboss all over your print. But for now, let's just see how this one's taken. So I've just got a piece of scrap board here, and this is Bockingford. I'm just going to close the pole press like that. There we go, first one off. From here, you can see if you need to add any more make ready. And if you have a smaller design, you're going to get a greater amount of emboss. The design will probably be more raised than it is on a design like this. Because this has got this is quite large and it's got quite a um, a large area um, to actually get a deboss from. And I will show you before we finished the difference between this and some small initials. So basically, I'm just going to turn this round because I can't print with my left hand on a wonk. I've just got some 300 gram board there. And just to show you the difference between this and the piece of bocking thread we use first, there we go. You're going to need a fair amount of pressure, but the design's still lovely and crisp. And if I show you the reverse, you see it also makes a pretty pattern on the back. So be aware as well, if you're looking at a two-sided design, whether it's business cards or, and you're looking to print details on the reverse of the business card, that you're going to have this impression mark on the back. Unless of course, you emboss and then duplex to your already printed reverses, then we've got rid of that, that problem. Let me compare. Actually, I'm just going to take another impression on the booking foot with my right hand. There we go. And if I show you by comparison, get them the right way around, the difference. Now, our embossing pairs thus far are only made, we make them with our 95 plates. And what's great about them is because they're on the polymers, you can take them off and reuse them and they won't curl and bend and break 
um, as something like a resin back wood. So you can see the difference, we're picking up all the details in our design. And they're probably the thickest boards um, that we have here. I also have, bear with me, some 540 gram colour plan. I'm just going to put this in place with a couple of gauge pins. Very roughly, as you can see. I should have one of our flexible timpans on so that the uh, gauge pins are easy to remove. It's just, just using this so I can just show you how it works on a thicker board as well. Again, you're going to need a fair amount of force. And because this plate is quite large, It needs a lot more than normal, but you can see we have a beautiful emboss on the top and on the reverse of the card, we have the detail too. And just very quickly, we have an envelope, well it's dark because I didn't have any um, diamond flaps. Just going to get this into a rough position. Probably be upside down. But it'll give you some sort of idea of what you can actually do when you have your press set up properly with an embossing plate. There we go. I'm going to, if I was going to be printing a lot of these envelopes, I'd reduce my impression slightly because I'm getting some creasing. But there are ways and around ways around that, so it's not a, a huge problem. But you can see you can put wreaths, initials, um, your wedding couples' names, and still get a lovely finish just to really complete a wedding stationery suite or corporate stationery. What I find with embossing is you only need a very small amount to give your design that extra level of oomph. Um, you don't need to go all out and throw everything at it to get something that's eye-catching and can really raise your design above others. Right, before we finish this little video, um, I mentioned I wanted to show you the difference that using a small design like some letters would make um, to your print. Um, I'm going to compare them to that larger plate that I initially used, the printer's fist. Um, to show you how a smaller set of plates, how much more relief or emboss it will give to you. So I've set up just three initials, LBP for Lime Bay Press, on here in exactly the same way as we did before. This is the 540 gram colour plan. I'm just going to pop that off to the side. But I wanted to do it on the same print or well, the same impression that I took earlier, so that you could see the difference between the two. So this is the 540 gram colour plan. Fair bit of welly, but not as much. You can actually see, it looks like you're getting more of an emboss because your plates are smaller for the amount of pressure that you're exerting. So the bigger your plate, the less of an emboss you're going to get unless you've got really big muscles. Well, you don't need big muscles, but unless you're really strong. Let's do the same thing again. This is our piece of bocking foot. Really simple. But again, you can see just how different that is. Because the design, the actual plates that we're using are smaller. The 300 gram card, let's pop it on the edge, really quite simple. It's on things like this, you're going to be careful of how far you can actually go with the amount of pressure that you're applying before you start to split the design that you're embossing or the boards that you're embossing onto. 
And finally our envelope. And because this is the thinnest, this will probably show the creases. There we go. This is what I mentioned earlier, that under too much pressure on too thin a stock, we're going to have this creasing start to happen. So you're gonna to have to alter the impression strength, the level of impression that you have on your press to take that into account. But it's, if I just quickly, I don't know how effective it will be on this. I'm just taking back the impression on here, which I'll swear about later, because when I come to print on her, she'll be out. But literally, my frisky fingers. There we go. I've taken off the impression. I'm still getting a little bit of a crease, but you can actually use pieces of foam, etc., to hold your paper out to prevent that from happening. Embossing is going to be very similar to how you first started printing letterpress. Now you've got that perfect, the printing of letterpress, that is. It won't take much to get used to printing the two plates to create that embossed finish on your design and start creating embossed invitations. Any questions as always, please send me a message, email, phone call. There's something below that where you can comment. It'd be great if you can follow us or subscribe to our channel. Um, follow us on Instagram and, and Facebook and see all the outtakes. Thank you.